In this G7 long range ballistic calculator instructional segment, we're going to cover how to log in, your basic input parameters, the save functionality, and the help files that are available throughout the program. Now the reason why you're going to want to log in to the program is because it gives you a unique profile and allows you to store and save all of your load and your target information. Now, if you haven't already registered, we just need your first name, last name, email, and a password. Now, I've already registered. So I'll enter in my email and password and log in. Now, we have a forgot password. If you uh, do forget your password, we'll just send a copy of it to your email. So in the input section, what we want to do is just the basic configurations here of our load data, our environmental data, and our siting data. So we've, we've kind of got some specific sections here. And at each section, we have a help file that's available. Uh, all you need to do is just click on the question mark box, and it'll bring up a, a short description of all the inputs for that section. It's really straightforward. The first thing that we want to do is enter our bullet ballistic coefficient the bullet's weight, and the muzzle velocity that you measure 15 feet from your barrel. So uh, the bullet BC can be listed on your manufacturer's box or in a load manual, or we can go to the bullet BC lookup uh, table. Uh, this selector will allow you to pick a different manufacturer, and a, uh, in this case we'll do a burger, and the caliber. and the weight. And this will show you that you've got a uh, 617 at 168 grain and we're going to add that to the program. Okay, so we've got a 617, 168 grain and let's use a 3025 feet per second as our muzzle velocity. So uh, once we've done those three inputs, our configure load data section is done. Now we do have the factory load lookup that will allow you to pick a, uh, an actual loaded cartridge from a factory uh, manufacturer like Hornaday or Remington and it will put the bullet BC and the average muzzle velocity for the cartridge. Now realize that that's not a measured muzzle velocity, that's a predicted muzzle velocity so it will be slightly different. And uh, once we've made some inputs and calculations we'll come back and show you this trajectory validation feature. All right, so in the third section of configuring your environmental data, we're going to look at the air density and the, uh, the wind uh, information that you're going to experience in the field. So at our shooting range, we're going to be at 4375. And now you'll notice that the temperature and the station pressure were both updated for that altitude. It automatically calculates the standard temperature and station pressure for that altitude. But we're going to update this because I'm shooting uh, this fall and it's relatively warm. We're going to be at 70 degrees. Now that won't change your station pressure. If I'm at the range and I measure the actual station pressure, I can enter that value here and it will be even more accurate than using the equivalent station pressure for that altitude. Uh, relative humidity, I'm going to leave that at 50%. You can verify this for your own satisfaction, but changing the humidity has a very small effect on your ballistic calculation. For wind data, I'll just click on this wind uh, input feature, and I'll just drag a 10 mile per hour, and see the magnitude changes as you make the arrow longer or shorter, and then the direction changes uh, as you pull it around the clock. So I want a three o'clock wind, which is basically a crosswind, at 10 miles per hour and I'm going to save that and that will automatically input that into the program. So we have uh, 3 o'clock 10 mile per hour wind. So the environmental data is uh, complete. We'll move on to the configure siding data section. Now here we've got just some basic information about your gun, how you've got your zero set up. Uh, scope height is measured from the center of your bore to the center of your scope. Now we're running about a 1.8. You can either use the up and down arrows or you can highlight the section and type over it. Zero range, 200. That's a fairly standard zero range. We're going to leave that. And our zero height is zero. 
Now, a zero range of 200 with a, with a zero height of zero is approximately equivalent to a zero range of 100 with a zero height of an inch and a quarter. So that zero height can change based on how high you're sighting your gun at the range you're zeroing. Now the inclination angle is uh, the angle that you have uh, from your line of sight to your target. And you can either measure that in degrees, or we prefer to use the cosine indicators, which is a zero to one input. So it could be something like a 0.98, and that's, that's approximately 11 degrees. So it, it also will convert that for you. And finally, the last input that we have is the click value. For the new G7 rifle scope, we have a quarter MOA click value. That means that it, for every click, it adjusts the elevation one quarter of a minute of angle. That's approximately equal to a quarter inch at 100 yards. We do have a mil and tenth mil inputs as well as a custom MOA input. Let's say you've got a, a scope and you've measured that it actually changes uh, 0.343 minutes of angle per, you will find that uh, this custom feature is, is very handy for getting really accurate adjustments. Once we've input our sighting data, we can save this load and save our target information. So click Save Load. I'm going to save this as 7 millimeter Remington Mag. And let's save this target. Let's do Gunworks range. Now let's explore the save functionality real quick. If we change any of our parameters, let's say we change the BC and the muzzle velocity will change to something different. Now if we save this load, we can save it as a different, let's save this as test Now when we go to our drop downs, we can see that we can go back and make a new load. With the standard inputs, or we can select our 7 Remington mag that has 3025 velocity. Or we can try our test load, which is 3010. Now I don't want that load, so I'm going to remove that. And now in my drop down list, I only have the 7mm Remington mag. Now you can add a descriptor like uh, a specific firearm or even a, a specific load, a uh, set of load information like uh, 72 grains of Hodgson Retumbo so that you can store that specific information. And it works the same uh, at your target uh, scenario. Basically, that sets your environmental data and uh, uh, the load rifle description stores your load data and your sighting data. Now that we've covered the login, input parameters, and help files available throughout the program, as well as the save functionality, be sure to view the remainder of the Long Range Ballistic Calculator instructional videos available at g7.com.